Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses. And this is his life, a mystery by the Imperator. An article taken from Rosicrucian Digest, volume 12, number 4, May 1934. This is life, a mystery by the Imperator. Frequently in conversation with persons who are strangers to our organization, we notice a sort of cynical expression come upon their countenance when we say that the Rosicrucian organization is principally interested in studying the mysteries of life. Occasionally, these persons will frankly state that such purposes seem rather unimportant and immaterial, for they say they have not found that life contains any great mysteries, except perhaps the mystery of birth and of death. It has often been argued by those who have no real interest in the serious purposes of life that life is merely like a game of chance and that the only mysteries found in life are those mysteries which man makes out of nothing in his attempt to look with the eye of the wizard upon natural and normal conditions as though they were some unusual form of strange mystery. It is true that the two greatest mysteries in life are those which constitute the beginning and the so-called end of our earthly existence. The mystery of cell conception growth and development into a living form is not only a biological mystery, but a cosmological and universal mystery. The separation of consciousness and soul from the body at transition is an astounding mystery when one comes face to face with it. But between these two great mysteries are thousands of others that should occupy the attention of men's minds with the same degree of intensity, devotion, and universal comprehension as do the two great mysteries Thousands of minds have spent sleepless nights and long daylight hours in laboratories working over microscopes trying to fathom or understand the mystery of cell life and of cell reproduction. Thousands have tried to find the cause of so-called death and millions have devoted their time to ways and means of preventing the untimely or seemingly unnecessary separation of soul and body. But comparatively few have given any thought or much thought to the other mysteries that are so closely related to the active living vital hours of our lives that represent the span between birth and transition. The mystery of thought is one which, as one analyzes it and attempts to fathom it, becomes startlingly evasive and complex. I cannot prevent the sense of admiration and wonderment that comes to me while I am dictating these words and ponder over the idea that a thought can be instantly formed in my mind and before I have a chance to analyze it. My lips have spoken it and produced sounds which enable a stenographer to write on a page of paper certain strokes which represent the sound she has heard. I do not have to pause and deliberately form my words and think of them separately and independently, nor does she have to stop and analyze the sounds she hears and think long about their nature and the form in which they should be expressed with marks by her pencil. The whole process seems to be instantaneous. The moment a thought comes to my mind, the words have spoken it, and I seem to listen to myself stating the things that my mind contains before I have a chance to realize that they are in my mind. It is a marvelous process and truly beyond human comprehension. And then I want to reach for my pen. No sooner does the thought begin to form in my mind than my hand reaches out and grasps the pen. What marvelous mechanism and what marvelous power lies back of a human thought. The thought directs the mind and the mind directs an energy and that energy flows properly and intelligently into certain muscles and causes them to act. And my heavy arm is moved through space and my fingers formed and shaped into a certain position to grasp the pen and then move the pen toward me again. To build a piece of machinery to do what my arm and hand do would require thousands of pieces of delicate apparatus, wheels, springs, levers, rods, and many jointed pieces of mechanism of a very delicate nature. It would require also a superior energy that would be able to exert itself instantly and with full force if necessary. And all of these things must be done intelligently. Therefore, the energy would have to be directed with some mechanical intelligence beyond man's ability to create. A mechanical arm acting on impulse or thought urge, as does my arm, would be the most marvelous invention in the world. Yet, man possesses that and many other forms of ability that he uses hourly and daily without considering the mystery back of them. The mystery of seeing and through the sight impressions, understanding and realizing is another great mystery that is appreciated only by those who live in eternal darkness. The mystery of hearing and interpreting the sounds, the mystery of smelling and feeling are too great for mere laboratory explanations. 
The mystery of love and of anger, hate, envy, jealousy, and other emotions are ones which have puzzled psychologists, psychoanalysts, and others, even when our organs themselves do not inspire consideration. The mystery of man's mind and its control of the body is astonishing. The fact that I can merely create the thought of rising from my chair and instantly have the mind create and direct throughout my system an invisible energy that will lift my heavy body upward is a mystery that the mystic and the student of life's great secrets will always look upon as worthy of his utmost attention and consideration. Restless, curious man is ever seeking for mysteries and unsolved manifestations of invisible intelligence. He creates and invents devices that will take him to the bottom of the sea, where he may discover something about the unknown depths of the great bodies of water. He devises and creates machines that will take him to great heights that he may explore mysteries of the cosmic. He invents other devices that will carry him into the rarefied air that he may attempt to discover the mystery of the sun's radiations, the cosmic vibrations, and the invisible rays that produce so many strange effects upon our earth. He delves into the bowels of the earth and spends hours, days, and months in winding passages and darkened channels, attempting to find the key to the mystery of the earth's wealth and its mineral composition. Thousands of minds are greatly concerned with the mystery of the lines that appear on Mars and the shadows that appear upon the moon and other strange conditions surrounding the planets. But such men and the majority of us take lightly the great fields for exploration that lie within our beings. To explore the human mind, to visit inwardly the human soul, and to make the utmost of the opportunities which might be revealed by a study of man's own nature seem to be set aside as unimportant and unworthy of the great attention that is given to other matters. More attention, more discussion, and more concern is felt in scientific circles about the rings that accompany the planet Saturn in her movements through the space of the universe than is given to the here and now problems of our own inner existence. It is only when man turns the searchlight of inquiry inwardly and attempts to know himself as the great mystery of all mysteries that he comes to understand God and the rest of the universe and at the same time becomes a true worker in the vineyard of God's children of light. To know oneself is to know one's heritage and one's power. This is why we as Rosicrucians feel that the subjects of our studies are worthy of all the time and devotion we give to them and will lead man to greater power and greater glory than the secondary studies and investigations of astral mysteries. Now, thank you for watching and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe and comment and if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Roses. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.